welcome. This is Bill Richter at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Kingwood, Texas. This is our regular Thursday evening prayer service for peace, love, and hope. We're delighted that you've joined us. We hope you find this service a nice respite from the busyness of the holiday season. There are other things going on in the life of the church, special programs and events, and I'll put the church web address up at the end of the service. And if you see something you'd like to uh, be a part of, please feel free to join us. And if you have questions, um, you may call the office and we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Thank you so much for being here today. It's always an honor and a blessing to have you with us. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Give peace, O oh Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of hope, when your Son, Jesus Christ, appears, may he not find us asleep or idle, but active in his service and ready. Come, O come, Emmanuel. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Come, living Savior, come to your world which waits for you. Hear our prayers for your love's sake. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all the people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All the people are grass. Their constancy is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the breath, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules with him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. And now a reading from the Gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've used the readings from this past Sunday to talk a little bit about the significance of wilderness. A wilderness for the Jewish people was a place of danger and chaos. Wilderness is a place where you're quickly brought into the realization of how fragile life is. Wilderness is a place of risk and danger. Um, no question about that. But wilderness was also a place where people frequently encountered God. Moses encountered God at the burning bush in the wilderness. The Hebrew people became the children of 
Israel and the chosen people of God in the wilderness. The prophet Elijah heard the still small voice of God in the wilderness, and Jesus was tempted after his baptism as he went into the wilderness. So the wilderness is a place of, of testing and trial. It also is a place of encountering God. And sometimes those encounters with God can be trying and testing as well. To come into the presence of God is an, is an awesome and sometimes awful thing. It shakes our world up. It makes us, makes us understand that we need to see things in a different way. We need to, to act in the world in a different kind of way. And that can, that can really be threatening. But it is, it is something that is necessary so that we can move ourselves from the ways of the world into the ways of God and the kingdom of God. God is able to do amazing things like the prophet Isaiah talks about, making a level place in the desert wilderness, um, raising up valleys, taking down mountains, setting up a road where there has never been a road so that people may find their way home to a place of perfect rest and peace that comes to us through God as God is revealed in Jesus Christ. This is a time to prepare ourselves and to prepare our hearts. Maybe we need to go into the wilderness to get a little tune-up. Maybe we need to come out of the wilderness to recover a little bit. But but that wilderness is there, it, it stands as a testament to the incredibly powerful changes that God can bring about in our lives. If God can change the geography of the, of the wilderness or the desert, God can certainly change the geography of our hearts, our lives, and our relationships. In this season, may we be prepared to understand that that where we are relative to where God wants us to be, where we are relative to the wilderness. Are we going in? Are we coming out? Are we trying to recover or, or benefit from a wilderness experience? It is something to think about, something to ponder. God is, is able to do amazing and miraculous things on a, a cosmic geographic kind of level down to the level of our own individual hearts our lives, and our relationships. Amen. Before we begin our Advent Litany, I invite us all into a time of silent reflection and contemplation. This whole meditation practice is designed to keep us centered and present in the moment, not worrying about the past or the future, not entertaining thoughts or emotions. Simply let those things float by like a a boat on a river. Focus on your breathing. Notice the sensation of air moving in and out of your nostrils as you breathe or the sensation of, of your abdomen or chest rising and falling as you inhale or exhale. Be still. Know that God is at work in your life and in the world around you. I will ring a bell for us to start and the meditation will conclude with the beginning of the litany.
an Advent litany. The Advent of the Lord is near, new light dawning where there has been darkness, new hope reigning where there has been death and despair, new light, new hope, new life for all creation. This is a great season of preparation. We prepare for Christ, who broke the barriers between us and God, each other and God's creation. We wait with expectant hearts to prepare the way of the Lord. This is a season of watchfulness. We wait for the one who heard our cries and shared the suffering of our world. We wait in anticipation of God's light to penetrate the darkness and shine within us. This is a season of promise. We wait for the promise coming of Emmanuel, God with us, God for us, God in us. We wait and hope for our Redeemer to bring God's love into our broken world. This is a season of reflection. We wait to be transformed so that we can serve in God's kingdom as bearers of light. We wait expectantly for God's Savior to come and dwell in our midst. This is a season of fulfillment. We await the promise of God's kingdom, wholeness, reconciliation, and plenty for all. We wait for God's covenant to be fulfilled and for God's kingdom to come in its fullness. This is a season of joyful anticipation. We anticipate the day when God's glory will be revealed to all people together. We wait expectantly, attentive to all the signs of Christ's coming and our troubles and weaknesses into the barren places of our souls. Come Lord, come down, Come in, come among us and make us whole, into the war-torn and refugee, into those who live in conflict. Come, Lord, into the homeless and the unemployed, into those who feel abandoned. Come, Lord, come down, come in, come among us and make us whole, into the sick and disabled, into those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Come, Lord, into the poor and the starving, into those who are oppressed and abused, come, Lord. Into the lives of loved ones, into those from whom we are estranged, come, Lord. Come down, come in, come among us and make us whole. Lord, we long for your coming. Hasten the day when those who seek you in every nation will sit at your table. Hasten the day when suffering, pain, sickness, oppression, and death will be overcome forever. Hasten the day when we will be resurrected as a multicultural family and live in peace, harmony, joy, and love in your kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray that you bless us with true joy and peace in this life. Lead us away from being affected by hate and anger. Move us toward love, joy, and peace. Move us from restless minds and anxiety to give us that peace that the world cannot give. Remind us that true and lasting joy are found by following your ways, which are revealed to us in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, may we pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Be people of peace. Let peace live in your hearts. Share the peace of Christ with all you meet. Act out of compassion, not fear. Listen to all sides of the story and pray for peace in the world. In this Advent season, may we experience and share God's peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.